Hey guys, remember this last week? You know what really sucks? When your speedometer starts squealing. Yeah, well, after I ran the car for, well, not even another day, it started making a really, really loud noise, so much louder than before, and then it started whipping inside, and that unusual whipping sound told me it was probably the speedometer cable, and I'm going to take a guess it's probably what it is. Thank you, Tinkering Guy, or Jason, links down below in the uh, video description, so you can find uh, his page, he's doing a little work on his Volkswagen right now, chopping the back off of a Beetle, and putting a bus back onto it, turning it into a panel bug. So check it out, guys. He's got a link over there, but I'm pretty sure that speedometer cable is what it needs, and I got one right here. So we're gonna try to install it on Ruby, the Type 3. I've never replaced one on here before. That's a new experience to me. Should not be too unlike anything else on a Beetle. In fact, this cable is the same one that goes on a Super Beetle, and coincidentally, I just happen to have one. I found it in a parts bin of some stuff that somebody gave to me a long time ago, so I don't even have to spend any money for it, as long as it's the right cable, right? Anyway, jet flying over, ruining my intro, but that's life. So, like you like, you comment, subscribe, don't forget to plug the little place, get updates every time I play. Check out Dutch, done that all my different social media links, and we'll be back right after that intro. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Now on a Beetle or a Carmen Kia, this is really easy to do because the speedometer cable is available right there in the trunk. The trunk on a Type 3 is a separate compartment from the passenger compartment, so so none of the areas where I could have grabbed the cable are available on the Type 3, so I don't even have a reason to have the trunk open. So we'll keep that closed. That was pretty much for anybody that wants to tell me, oh, just you're doing it the wrong way, Duck Man. Well, you can't. <laughs> in a Super Beetle, you would pull a panel out it's right over here, there's about four screws. You pull that panel out of there and you can put your hand in and reach around the backside of the speedometer and pull the cable out. Otherwise, on a Type 3, we gotta handle everything from underneath the dashboard. Yeah. All right, I'm really not looking forward to this one because, well, I'm of duck man size and strength and that means I don't get into very small areas too well, unless you're watching me up on Pornhub, then I squeeze into just about anything, but, uh, all right. What I gotta do is replace the speedometer cable, which is, of course, in the speedometer, which is the center gauge here directly above the steering column, and I thought, well, maybe I can remove the steering column, but you know what, there's no opening up underneath there, so pulling the steering column's not going to get it. And yeah, I know the wires are kind of a dangly mess down here, that's just the way this car was from the time I got it. Nothing hits my legs or anything, so it really doesn't bug me. And this is my turn signal flasher, which periodically doesn't work, but if I give it one of those, it functions fine. And that last wire, I actually just pulled it out of there, it's for this, uh, this uh, cigarette lighter socket up here, which didn't seem to be working recently. I don't know what happened. I'll have to research that. But looking at the fuse holder on it, it looks a little melted. So I'm going to guess maybe the fuse popped on the inside of it. I was running a uh, portable compressor off of it, and that's what happened there. Well, anyway, I think what I'm going to do is going to pull out the fuse block and see if I can reach up inside. This appears to be the speedometer cable, though. And if it is, it feels like one. Oh, well, yeah, look at that. Uh, if the speedometer cable weren't broken, I wouldn't have been able to do that. <laughs> In fact, it kind of stopped, but yeah, anyway, if it weren't broken, I wouldn't be able to pull that much of it out. Unless, of course, it's the wrong cable, which could very well be. Maybe it's from a bus or something. I don't know what somebody put on here. This is whatever I got on here when I got it. Anyway, all right, fuse block out. <coughs> Let's see if I can reach up under there and get to the back of that cable. I really don't want to have to take the dash apart and pull the gauges out and try to attack it from the front. But if I can't get to it, I might have to ask for help. Because my hands are just so damn big. It looks like I knocked one of the fuses out of here just a second ago. Anyway. All right, I removed anyway, these two screws, the one here and the one there. Fuse block is now loose, which gives it just enough motion that I can get it out of the way. And I think I can reach up on the inside here. I've got my fingers tangled with some wires. There we go. All right, I'm in. And I saw sparks because I'm an idiot and I probably should have disconnected the uh, battery before I got started here. All right, hope I didn't cook nothing. If I did, it's probably a fuse. No, I think this touched ground anyway. I think we'll be okay. Well, there's my, yeah, speedometer cable. And, whoa, it's actually not broken on this end, which is where I expected it to be broken. There's a little bushing that's inside of there. You can see it. When it was making that warbling noise, that was exactly what I pictured. This going around and around and around on the inside, just battering the inside of the uh, outer wire. So, anyway, 
I think we can pull it out because it feels like it's free. Or semi-free, anyway. All right, well, something else is wrong. Guess I gotta pull that hubcap off anyway and figure out what's going on up underneath there. Yeah, we go. And look at that. It's still attached on here using a piece of uh, just mechanics wire, bailing wire, because I was lacking the clip that goes on there, and that's another suitable way to uh, make it function. But that's gotta come off. I'm surprised this hasn't pulled out. Maybe my speedometer did explode. That's not good. Hmm. All right. You can look into this a little more deeply. Well, I came back up to the top side here for a second, and I pinched the cable coming out of here, which in my mind, I pictured this end broken off in the back of the speedometer. But, yeah, it's broken. I mean, it wouldn't come out if it weren't broken. <laughs> so it's definitely broken. So the little nub is broken down here. This is not at all what I expected. I think I'm gonna have to pull the bearing cup off because I don't think it's gonna pull through. Not a big deal. Get in there with a little pry bar and just pop it out. I might have to pull the wheel off because to get to the back side of the spindle, to feed that cable in, it might be a little hard to do. I suppose I could roll it up on some ramps and we might do that, but we'll see what happens when we get to that point. But, bearing cap is on Nick. Before I even hit the record button, I started diddly dinking down here and I pulled off the little wire by hand without even using a tool. So, that's now come out. I need just something to push it through so it'll shoot out the back and we can start feeding in the new cable. Hopefully I'll get it aligned with this little hole that's on here, this little square hole. If you try to push the cable in and it's dis... Uh, if you try to push the cable in and it's misaligned, of course it's not going to go in. So it could be a little bit fussy or a little bit of a pain in the ass. So we're gonna do the best we can. Here we go. Yeah. So let's see what Push happens. It right through. Hopefully this screwdriver here is small enough that it'll go. Doesn't feel like it though. I may need a smaller, thinner pick. All right, All right push see what that I got. through with a skinny pick thing here, which doesn't want to go in. Interesting. All right, the cable on the back side of the spindle might be jammed. And that can be a problem sometimes, but uh, usually if you get around the back side and you just start pulling on the cable, you can just kind of rip it out. It's only held in by friction and, well, you know, years of dirt and grease and just whatever else is <laughs> built up around it kind of glues it in place. Otherwise, it's not mechanically held in by any other clips or anything, but yeah, it's just kind of stuck. This isn't all. I can actually bop it with a hammer, and that might knock it out too, so yeah, I'll give it a shot. All right, looks like the duck man's not getting off the easy way today. Let's loosen up these lug nuts. And then uh, I'm gonna jack it up and then pull the wheel off. There we go. All right. All right. Well, that over here is our cable. Right there. That's it. This is it stretching up and over, going into the body. I'm just gonna cut it off. Because remember, it has the uh, nut end that threads into the speedometer. That, woo, this thing is hard. There it goes. Anyway, the nut end is bigger than the hole, so I'm gonna have to um, feed it through from the top side down to here and push it through there anyway. But with this little short section here, it's a lot easier to work with. All right, well, that's what we're gonna yeah. do. We're gonna pull the cover off just for grins. Looking inside of here, everything's nice and greasy. Doesn't look like it got wet at any point. That's good. But the cable is long buried up inside the spindle. Yeah, I can still feel it in there. We know it's still there because this. So this is has been, in the past, one of the trickiest things I've dealt with. And before, I've actually grabbed it with one hand and used my foot and was able to push it out. But in this case, when I do it, I feel this cable stretching. So <laughs> it's just like a giant slinky, if you will. Well, a really long, skinny slinky that is just kind of stretching out. So I don't think it's gonna get it. I might still try it again anyway, see if it does. If it comes out, great. If it doesn't, well, we're gonna have to come up with an alternative solution, but that's definitely our problem well, I used today. the foot method, and sure enough, it pulled right on out. Now that I'm getting a good look at the outer cable, I can see it has a lot of holes in it. And what happened is probably moisture got into it and caused the end, which is this, which I had to knock out separately, by the way. When the cable came out, this had to be knocked out of the, uh, the inside of the spindle. I had to use a, a punch to push it out, and I used a screwdriver to get it out the rest of the way. But this little guy here is the end, and you notice it's wrapped in plastic because <laughs> whatever was left of the outer jacket on that wire, it kind of got hung up on, and. Uh, that was what uh, what was holding this whole thing together. So anyway, 
now it's free, it's loose. If I was in a situation where I didn't have access to new parts, I would probably even repair this because looking at the old wire, which is here, the end of it, trying to get the camera focused on it, there it is right here, it looks like, um, yeah, it's not really working too good, is it? Yeah, it looks like that end could very easily be put back onto this. And of course, had I not screwed up the jacket and everything on this cable because I knew I was going to replace it anyway, I wouldn't have ever gotten that far. But what we're going to do is we're going to shoot some P-Blaster through the inside of the spindle, which will give it a nice, nice lube, and it'll also make it, you know, oiled for whatever it's worth. I probably should put some grease on it too, so we'll probably do that also. And then we'll shove the speedometer cable through, but not until after we round it up through the body. It's going to go through that hole right there, which comes through from the passenger compartment up behind the speedometer. Now, of course, you won't be able to feed that through because, and I mentioned this before, and I don't even have the cable here to show you, but anyway, the end of the cable that goes on the speedometer is too big to go through that hole. So it has to come from top to bottom. So that's where we're going to our new cable. Alright, let's do that. The big end goes on the speedometer, small end which goes into the wheel, or hub if you will. And it's got to go through the hole in the body. If you look through that hole, there's another hole that's a dead shot of it, straight line. So I have to kind of go through both holes. Actually, it worked on the first try. Okay, well hey, good news. Just like that. And as I said, this big end would never go through that hole, so we can't feed it from bottom up. It has to go from top to bottom. All right, well, there it is. Cable should be sticking out down here, down below. If you are doing this on a Super Beetle, the cable would come out from underneath here somewhere, underneath the gas tank. There's actually a separate route for it. If you're on a standard Beetle, it comes through pretty much the same spot as here on the inside of the quarter. And then you want to go around. This cable seems unusually long. I'm gonna go around your tie rods like this, so this way the tie rods don't snag on things, and it'll be looped up and over like that. Now, you have to feed it into the back of the spindle, and I'm doing this by feel, but there's typically, I haven't even looped it yet, but there's typically a rubber grommet on the back side of this, which keeps out, or tries to keep out the moisture. Yep, and you just kind of push it right into that. So that's what I'm gonna do, but first I'm gonna lube everything up with some grease, because, well, you can't have too much grease. You just can't. Unless it gets in your brakes, but oh, <laughs> yeah, you can't have too much grease. So that's what we're going to do, and hopefully that'll give it a little bit of longevity and make it easier to come apart the next time I should have to, if I have to. We'll see how long I have this car. Not planning on keeping her forever. She's been good to me, though, but uh, anyway. Camera, we've been struggling for the last 10 minutes to get this crap out of the inside of the spindle. This was the old sheathing from the old cable. It got all stuck up on the inside of there. So that's what was glued in with all that grease, dirt, and whatever what have you. And when I tried to put the new cable through, it was too much force. I was going to end up damaging the new cable putting it in. You don't want to kink this thing, because if you kink this cable, what happens is it will, um, this is interesting, it will whip. It'll bind and whip, and it'll cause your speedometer needle to do this crap. You want a nice, smooth, straight cable. If there's any kinks in it anywhere, that's what it's going to do. So anyway, if I start forcing this cable into place, if I was going to start doing that, it's probably going to put a kink in it, and then it would have had a bouncy needle. But we should be ready to uh, go through at this point. I've got it lubed up, got everything greased up on the inside. We're going to do it by feel, feeding the cable through from the back side into the rubber grommet on the back of the spindle, and there's our little cable coming out. And now what I can do is I can put the bearing cap back on, which by the way, the hole is uh, not perfectly square anymore. It's a little bit wallered, as they say. So. I like to put the cap on the uh, speedometer cable first, and then put the cap onto the uh, hub. If you try to feed the cable through into the hub, sometimes you'd be really, really lucky if you make a basket on the first try, or even after many, many tries. You just can't get the cable lined up with the hole. I found this to be easier, so this is the way I'm going to do it. All right, well, there it is. We get a little piece of uh, wire put back on it the same way it was when we found it, and uh, we'll get this thing put back together, and hopefully the speedometer it's still working, and it's not just the cable. If the speedometer squeals too, now with the new cable, and of course we had more than one problem, it may have just been a compounded problem that caused the cable to go bad, so I guess we're gonna see. All right, well, here we go. Let's put this back together. Anyway, and as I said, I only had one hand, no tripod out here. Didn't feel like going to get it. So anyway, use a little bit of bailing wire. Got the speedometer cable on there. And I put the bearing cap back on. So this wheel is actually just about ready to go back on, but this cable up in here, can now be fed back into the cabin. Make sure that we have adequate slack, which looks good, and it's actually clearing everything. It's not near any moving parts. 
which by the way, the previous cable was routed over the tie rod instead of around it like it's supposed to be. So yeah, somebody did something that was not right to begin with. All right, well, let's go ahead and get the speedometer cable hooked up back All on the right. inside. I am not a fan of getting up underneath this dashboard on this car because I am just entirely too big. This is just total bullshit. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna put some of that cable back down under the car. And I'm gonna try to route it around these wires here. And hopefully I can get it up on the back side of this uh, speedometer without too much of a problem here. You know what, I'm gonna get really angry at this. I can tell already, I'm not happy. Yeah, and I'm at an awkward angle, I can't even get my hand in or out. Okay, well I'm putting the camera down. We'll be back in just a minute. We all spin our all together again, and I spun the wheel up as you can see, but I don't think I could spin it quite fast enough to get a reading on the speedometer. Because technically when it's at zero, it's actually pointing at 10, because that's the way it's designed. So I guess I gotta get about 10 miles per hour out of it. Anyway, while I was dicking around underneath there, I decided I was gonna replace some speedometer bulbs, because some of them have failed, and I discovered that was a, <laughs> a total cluster. So anyway, I'm fighting with that for the moment, but as soon as I get those bulbs back in, which I wish I could film for you, but there's I can't even see these things. So there's no way I can get a camera in there either. But uh, as soon as I get that back together, hopefully we'll take a test drive in this thing, and uh, hopefully the speedometer's working. Cross your fingers, guys, right? <laughs> All right, well, let me hammer at it. And as I was banging around on the dashboard, I heard something loose, and I couldn't figure out what it is. Anyway, when I energized everything, I discovered all the little lenses and the bezel and the dial face and all that crap is all loose inside the gauge. See, that's what I'm talking about. So I gotta gut the thing, put everything back together, glue it all back together. Story for another time. <laughs> so anyways, I suppose that's it for today. So licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle bell so you get updates every time that I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. And we'll be back, oh, I suppose, if I get this thing right. So, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see well, you next time. Well, that was absolutely no fun at all. Hopefully, I put the jewels back in the right places. I just went by memory. I should have watched an earlier video or something. But no, they're all back in place. No more loose crap on the inside of it. I hope the gas gauge still works. <laughs> There was three little watch screws that go underneath one of the uh, little bezels that's inside of there. You can't see them. If I get on a weird angle, you might be able to get under there. Anyway, all three of the screws came out. So I put them all in and I put a little dot of uh, hot glue on top of them to try to hold them in place to stop that from ever happening again. Oh, what a nuisance, though. Even the screws, they, they, they were semi-magnetic, so they were practically impossible to get them to uh, lay in position properly and thread them in. But anyway, gauge is back together. I guess I could throw it back in the car now. This is what a Type 3 gauge looks like. There's a plastic um, socket, I guess you could say, that goes over the back of this that this thing plugs into, which has all the wire hookups and all the bulbs in it. So anyway, that's the way that works. Interesting as it is, stupid. But somebody else is in here before. You can see somebody's has their own little notations, and it was obvious that some of these little lips and things had been pried by a human being and not done by a machine. But anyway, I'll try to throw it back in the dash, and hopefully we'll have lights in the fuel gauge again. All right, I suppose it's the moment of truth, right? <laughs> All right. There's our running lights, which now turn on the gauges like they're supposed to. The dimmer's working on them properly. And the green light is on because only my running lights are on. Headlights are on. And everything came on the way it's supposed to. It looks like my switch is a little flaky. I guess that's something I need to work on in addition to that. But the dimmer's still working. Good. All right, now, turn the key on. There we go. We have our oil light and our generator light. We're good on that, too. Okay, um, fuel gauge is also working. It was roughly in the middle before, so it looks like we're in the spot where you need to be. But that's good. Turn that on and off. We should see the needle move. Yep, needle is indeed moving. Good. Okay, so I guess we're in order again. And yeah, I know I haven't tested the uh, indicator for the uh, brights because the switch isn't working right. I think it's in the wiring. I don't know what it is. I haven't dealt with that yet. That's something I need to work on. But I do know that if I use my key to short from ground to the relay, I can actually make the, uh, the little blue light come on and the high beams come on just fine. So I think the majority of the wiring is good, but if there's any problem, it's in the wiring in the switch itself. All right, well, I guess we can uh, take this thing for a ride and see if the speedometer works. Well, there's Yay. always that one guy that says, well, I didn't see it, so it doesn't work. Well, there's my running lights, and there's the high beams, because now the high beams are on. 
So anyway, yeah, we're working. Good. And the turn signals, well, they never worked before and they still don't now, so no improvement. <laughs> they do have fresh bulbs though, just to be sure, and they're still not working, so something's in the wiring. I don't know what it is. Could have something to do with the turn signal flasher. That relay does stick a little bit, and that may be the issue. Well, good news, my gauges are brighter than they ever were. I can actually read them, which is incredible. I could barely read them before at all. Anyway, bad news is, speedometer's clearly not working. I guess it gave up. I'm gonna have to pull it out next, I suppose, and gut it. See if it's possible for me to even fix it. I don't know, I don't know anything about these things. It's like watchmaker kind of stuff. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.